Uh, here's the Ainsley circuit. I have it running on a 24 volt battery bank there. Those two 12 volt batteries. I got the timer running on a separate um, 6 volt battery. Um, the resistor is running at uh, it's almost too hot to touch but what I'm doing is just showing um, that it is possible to take the spike from the coil which right now the coil is at well, it's 200 millivolt or 200 volt division so two four six seven so it's about almost 700 volts uh, spikes and I basically have it going through the yellow wire um, through a diode um, into this fluorescent light tube and out of the fluorescent light tube to the top of the coil and um, it's not an impressive amount of light but it's just showing that those spikes can be sent to the um, to a fluorescent light tube Let's see connection just fell off there um. <clears throat> So with adjusting the 555 timer circuit, um, doesn't light up much more than that. But of course, tuning has quite a bit to do with this stuff. Um, across the load shunt right now, 115 millivolts. So across the load shunt, about 115 millivolts, and I can keep reducing the on time, and I can bring it down to well all the way off <clears throat> but it'll stay running at about 40 millivolts so you kinda have to jump start it at a higher level and then you can maintain that the lighting um, I'm just increasing the on time again and sometimes what I find is I have to actually hold the, the well see now it just lit up by me just grabbing it now I let go and then it'll stay lit <clears throat> and so I'm just bringing down the on time right here and uh, have it a relatively slow frequency I can have it at well actually it's one point it's over one it's about 1.3 megahertz and so you know to there's a lot of different ways to tune the 555 to you know do what you want with it and different resistors and different diodes and all this kind of stuff so anyway it's definitely something that if there's any promise with the circuit and lighting a tube at any kind of high efficiency that it's definitely going to take some work to, to do all that. Um, I'm most likely going to just go back to making heat. Um, the resistor right now is, is you know almost too hot to touch at about 180 millivolts DC at the shunt with 24 volt bank but I can just keep reducing the on time like this and the light stays about the same. Well it is staying the same and I'm down to 110 millivolts and down to 90 millivolts so I can bring it down to about 60 millivolts and maintain the max brightness um, if I grab it you know it lights up a little bit more right there if I touch the um, the MOSFET uh, it kind of dims out just barely you can see it kind of pulsing off and on while I'm doing that and so um, increasing gate resistance drops it down almost immediate drops it down almost immediately um, so anyway, just just a possibility. Um, I'd like to see if there's any advantage using this MOSFET concept of being able to conduct the current in the reverse direction um, on a lot of these other circuits, like the lid motor, Slayer circuits, Emotep circuits, and everybody else who's worked with the high efficiency lighting circuits. Um, and uh, so anyway, just wanted to show that well I was just going to disconnect the um, the wire from one of the leads that's going to the top to the positive of the coil you know from the bottom going into the bulb out of the bulb to the top of the coil and I disconnected it and the light is staying lit so it is basically just the, the one wire high voltage um, effect just one wire there I don't know if there's any advantage to grounding it anywhere else it doesn't seem to make a difference so anyway that's that on a one wire lighting from the Ainsley circuit.